Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rena, and I am going to be reading today for you. I'd like you to hear the book of Enoch. Um, we're going to be restarting at chapter 25 since I didn't finish the entire chapter the other day. Um, and we shall get to it. Um, just asking Holy Spirit that you would lead me and guide me. And um, I encourage all sisters and brothers out there at this time to do as much as you can while you can because you can because we are in a very critical time and uh, we're getting so extremely close to things things happening very exciting things very exciting things nothing to fear nothing to fear at all for the Lord he gives us a spirit one of love and of power and of, of a sound mind, correct? So uh, I would suggest too, you may want to just uh, ask the Holy Spirit about what you can do if you can get on and start doing um, YouTube while you can or other platforms while you can to reach out to as many as you can um, while you're in person, wherever you go as well. These are things that... Um, we're, you know, it's picking up your cross and following Jesus and just not letting go of his hymn, spending a lot of alone time with him. Um, and in fact, I'm probably guilty of that, but I also like to get on and get into my researching and doing, watching other people on YouTube as well, which I've uh, gone through and eliminated a lot of them off. Um, which, if you, are, if you are subscribed to a lot of people, I would suggest that you may want to go through, scroll through, and uh, just get rid of some of the stuff that you don't watch. Or um, maybe, you know, because you hear things on the channels, and if you want to receive things like directly from the Holy Spirit yourself, uh, the way to do that is by not watching everybody else's videos, okay? Because he will give freely information that is going to be given to you that, you know, everybody is gifted in different ways. And that's another thing that's amazing and beautiful. Um, so, you know, there's we're all sisters and brothers uh, in Christ Jesus. Amen. And... There is like a um, true anointing that's taking place on people if you would just recognize, realize who you are, okay? So important. So I love you all so much and you know, I just want to get started on the reading today. If you have any comments about prayers, anything like that, please leave them in the comments and I will be praying with you for you. And uh, also the email address is in the description box as well, so you can email me if you would like. So let's get started. Um, chapter 25 is where we were at yes, the, uh, just the other day. So I'm just gonna start over right there uh, because the next page actually continues on with chapter 25. So we're gonna start out here with Enoch. First Enoch only, okay? Don't read the second and the third books of Enoch because those are uh, they came along so much later. There were four copies of Enoch found in the Dead Sea Scrolls and in cave number seven. You can research this and figure it out on your own. Um, the other couple things, maybe I'll get to that in a minute and hopefully we can discuss about the other couple things I wanted to tell you about. But let's just read for now. And he said to me, Enoch, why do you ask me about the fragrance of the tree and why do you wish to learn the truth? Then I answered him saying, I wish to know about everything, but especially about this tree. Just a sec. I'm sorry. Let me just shut this door real quick. I'm hearing my heart too so loud down here in this Brooklyn. I'm going to look out, you fat butt. Look out. I, I'm just hearing it on the video, the cartoon or whatever it is you're watching. So I'm shutting the door for a second. Thanks for hanging in there. All right. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. I just wanted to thank you too. All right. 
Let's get back to this. Then I answered him saying, I wish to know about everything, but especially about this tree. And he answered saying, this high mountain, which you have seen, whose summit is like the throne of God, is his throne, where the Holy Great One, the Lord of glory, the eternal King, will sit when he shall come down to visit the earth with goodness. And as for this fragrant tree, no mortal is permitted to touch it until the great judgment. When he shall take vengeance on all and bring everything to its completion forever. It shall be, it shall then be given to the righteous and holy. Its fruit shall be for food to the elect. It shall be transplanted to the holy place, to the temple of the Lord, the eternal King. Revelation 22 verses 1 through 3 states and he showed me a pure river of water of life clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of god and of the lamb in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life which bore 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations and there shall be no more curses but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. This is verse 6. Then they shall rejoice and be glad and enter into the holy place, and its fragrance shall enter into their bones. Okay? So you see, when Jesus came back after the three days that he was buried in the tomb, he told Thomas, he told everybody, see now, I'm just flesh and bone, no more blood. So we have bones, we will have bones in our immortal body, okay? Because um, we follow after the suit, first fruits follows after the suit in the same way that the, the very first born Jesus, that's the way it happened and we follow in suit with him. So he says this. And they shall live a long life on earth as your fathers lived. And in their days there shall be no sorrow or pain or torment or toil. So this is also very exciting. So people, we're going to go back to like it was in the beginning in Genesis when people were living for hundreds of years. And there will be mortals that will be still being born. Okay, this is exciting. This is very exciting. I'm starting to think that the 144,000 of Israel the, that are going to be probably led by the two witnesses and Jesus at some point to receive uh, their seals and things like that, right? Um, they are going to have, I know that there's going to be children that are still going to be being born. So during that thousand years, there will be more families that are going to be coming on the scene that we will be dwelling with on the earth. So we will be, it will be mortal, immortal, or I'm not sure if we will be totally fully glorified yet. I don't know if that comes at the end of the thousand years. I'm just being honest. Um, because it's not, I don't believe that is stated in scripture about this. So, um, but yes, immortal, yes. And Jesus here with us, I believe so, yes. And so, and the Father Abba comes down at the end of the thousand year millennial reign, I believe. But I would love for him to come down um, at the very beginning and just stay down here with us for a thousand years. <laughs> but see there, there is no such thing as time. So it's, time is just eternal. It's an eternal thing now. So you just, we can stop looking at it like it's time, but it will still be a thousand years. Okay. It seems like a very long time, right? All right. So let's read on. Um, Okay, so I'm going to read again from 6. Then they shall rejoice and be glad and enter into the holy place and its fragrance shall enter into their bones and they shall live a long life on earth as their fathers lived. And in their days there will be no sorrow or pain or torment or toil. Then I bless the God of glory, the eternal King, 
who has prepared such things for the righteous and has created them and promised to give to them. Ezekiel 47 verse 12 Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear, because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food, and their leaves for healing. Amen. Chapter 26. And I went from there to the middle of the earth, and I saw a blessed place in which there were trees with branches alive and blooming on a tree that had been cut down. Okay? And I saw a holy mountain. And underneath the mountain to the east, there was a stream, and it flowed towards the south. And I saw towards the east another mountain higher than this. And between them a deep and narrow valley. In it ran a stream underneath the mountain, and to the west of it there was another mountain, lower than the former, uh, and the small elevation, and a dry deep valley between them. And another deep and dry valley was at the edge of the three mountains. And all the valleys were deep and narrow, being formed from hard rock, and there were no trees planted on them. And I was very amazed at the rocks and the valleys. Chapter 27. Then I said, What is the purpose of this blessed land, which is entirely filled with trees? And what is the purpose of the accursed valley between them? Then Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with me, answered and said, This accursed valley is for those who are cursed forever. Here shall all the accursed be gathered together who utter with their lips words against the Lord, not befitting his glory or say hard things against him. Here shall they be gathered together and here shall their place be their place of judgment. In the last days, there shall be the spectacle of righteous judgment on them in the presence of the righteous forever. Here shall the merciful bless the Lord of glory, the eternal King. In the days of judgment, they shall bless him for the mercy in that he has shown them. Then I blessed the Lord of glory and set out his glory and praised him gloriously. Chapter 28. Then I went towards the east into the midst of the mountain range in the desert, and I saw a wilderness and it was solitary, full of trees and plants, and water gushed out from above. Rushing like a torrent, which flowed towards the northwest, it caused clouds and dew to fall on every side. Then I went to another place in the desert and approached to the east of this mountain range. And there I saw aromatic aromatic trees exuding the fragrance of frankincense and myrrh how beautiful and the trees also were similar to the almond tree beyond these i went far to the east and i saw another place a valley full of water like one that would not run dry and there was a tree the color of fragrant trees was that of mastic and on the sides of those valleys I saw fragrant cinnamon, and beyond these I proceeded to the east. And I saw another mo other mountains, and among them were groves of trees, and there was nectar that flowed from them, which is named Sarah, Sarah, I think that's how it's pronounced, it's not, it's like Serara, and uh, Galbanum. And beyond these mountains I saw another mountain in the east of the ends of the earth, on which there were os aloe trees. And all the trees were full of fruit, being like almond trees. And when it was burned, it smelled sweeter than any fragrant odor. That bird is just singing outside. Oh yeah, chapter 32. And after I had smelled the fragrant odors, I looked towards the north. Over the mountains, I saw seven mountains full of fine, nard, and fragrant trees of cinnamon and pepper. 
And then I went over the summits of all these mountains far towards the east of the earth and passed over the Red Sea and went far from it and passed over the angel Zotiel. Okay, so in here it says the angel Zotel, whose name means little one of God, welcomes back those sinners who have gone astray but have repented. Based on the description of the locations, some have suggested the Sphinx could be a representation. I told you all a while back that the pyramids and that Egypt was a very important, is a very important place to the Lord. Very important. Okay, he grew up there a lot of his life. He was there. That's where Moses was at. And Moses was an inside job. We know from Jonathan Cleck, everything was done um, just perfectly. So, uh, let's see. And I came to the garden of righteousness. I saw far beyond those trees, more trees. And there were numerous, they were numerous and large. There were two trees, these very large, beautiful, glorious, and magnificent. The tree of knowledge, whose holy fruit they ate and acquired great wisdom. That tree is in height like the fir, and its leaves are like those of the carob tree, and its fruit is like the clusters of the grapes. Very beautiful. And the fragrance of the tree carries far. Okay, Isaiah 60, verse 13. The glory of Lebanon will come to you, the pine, the fir, and the cypress together to adorn the place of my sanctuary, and I will glorify the place of my feet. Hallelujah. All right, so back to verse 6, chapter 32 of Enoch. First Enoch, then I said, how beautiful is the tree, and how attractive is its look. Then Raphael, the holy angel who was with me, answered me and said, This is the tree of wisdom, of which your father of old and your mother of old, we're talking about Adam and Eve, um, who were your progenitors, have eaten. And they learned wisdom, and their eyes were opened. And they knew that they were naked, and they were driven out of the garden. Chapter 33. And from there I went to the ends of the earth and saw their large beasts, and each differed from the other. And I saw birds also differing in appearance and beauty and voice, the one differing from the other. And to the east of those beasts I saw the ends of the earth where heaven rests on it and the doors of heaven open. And I saw how the stars of heaven come out, and I counted the gates from which they came out, and wrote down all their outlets of each individual star by their number and their names, their courses and their positions, and their times and their months, as Uriel the holy angel who was with me showed me. He showed me all things and wrote them down for me, also their names he wrote for me, and their laws and their functions. Chapter 34. From there I went towards the north to the ends of the earth, and there I saw a great and glorious device at the ends of the whole earth. And here I saw three gates of heaven open. Through each of them proceed north winds. When they blow, there is cold, hail, frost, snow, dew, and rain. And out of one gate, they blow for good. But when they blow through the other two gates, it is for violence and torment on the earth. And they blow with force. Then I went towards the west. This is chapter 35. Then I went towards the west to the ends of the earth and saw the three, their three gates of heaven open such as I had seen in the east the same number of gates, and the same number of outlets. Chapter 36. And from there I went to the south to the ends of the earth, and saw there, th that bird is beautiful, and saw there three open gates of heaven. 
and from them come dew, rain, and wind. And from there I went to the east to the ends of heaven, and saw here the three eastern gates of heaven open and small gates above them. Through each of the small gates pass the stars of heaven, and they run their course to the west on the path which is shown to them. As I often, and as often, excuse me, and as often as I saw, I blessed always the Lord of glory, and I continued to bless the Lord of glory, glory, who has done great and glorious wonders, who has shown the greatness of his work to the angels and to the spirits, and to spirits and to men, that they might praise his work and all his creation, that they might see the power of his might and praise the great work of his hands and bless him forever. I love this, you guys. This, my, my very, actually, this is also one of my favorite chapters coming up. You are going to want to hear this. This is absolutely amazing. Just hold on. We're almost there. Chapter 37. This is called the book of parables, okay? The second vision which he saw. The vision of wisdom which Enoch, the son of Jared, and the son of Mahakalel, the son of Canaan, the son of Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, saw. And this is the beginning of the words of wisdom which I lifted up my voice to speak and say to those which dwell on earth. Hear you men of old time and see you that come after the words of the Holy One which I will speak before the Lord of Spirits. The words are for the men of old time and to those that come after. We will not withhold the beginning of wisdom from this present day. Such wisdom has never been given by the Lord of Spirits as I have received according to my insight, according to the good pleasure of the Lord of Spirits, by whom the lot of eternal life has been given to me. Now the parables were imparted to me, three of them, and I lifted up my voice and recounted them to, the, to those that dwell on the earth. I'm sorry, I'm just getting excited, you guys. I get excited. Okay, chapter 38, the first parable. When the congregation of the righteous shall appear and sinners shall be judged for their sins and shall be driven from the face of the earth, and when the righteous one shall appear before the eyes of the elect righteous ones, whose works are weighed by the Lord of Spirits, light shall appear to the righteous and the elect who dwell on the earth. Where will there be the dwelling for sinners? And where the will and where the will there be a resting place for those who have denied